Welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at someone's uh, front crawl and we're going to hopefully provide some constructive feedback. So let's get into it. Here we go. Okay, so there's no audio. So uh, I'm just going to take a look and oh, wow. This is a common problem that I see a lot of beginner swimmers do. Yeah. Ooh, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I can already tell what I'm going to say. <laughs> I already know. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So that's the end of the clip. Okay. So let's talk about the good things. Okay. So let's take a, take a look at his gear first. First of all, he's wearing goggles. That's good. Uh, but you notice that he's wearing regular shorts. And those shorts, and you'll notice that he's swimming really fast. He's trying to swim really fast. Okay, now, if you're gonna swim really fast, you might as well wear jammers. Cause uh, anything baggy is just gonna create a lot of drag in the water and it's gonna slow you down. So it's working uh, against you in the water. So get some jammers, all right? If you're a guy, and if you're a girl, if you're trying to swim fast, uh, wear a one-piece swimsuit, okay? Usually Speedo is a good brand to go for, all right? Stay away from bikinis and all of that stuff that you wear to the beach for Getting a suntan because that's not going to work. Okay, especially when you're trying to swim fast. Uh, another thing I noticed that he's not wearing a swim cap. Okay, so you notice he has like medium length hair, kind of like my hairstyle. I don't know why, but there's no swim cap on him. All right, wear a swim cap. All right, putting that cap on your head, whether you're whether you're a guy or a girl, is going to reduce the drag. Okay, especially if you want to swim fast like him. Okay, if Guys, if you are bald, like completely bald, like head is completely shaved from the hair, yeah, you don't need a swim cap, obviously. But if you have short hair or any kind of hair on your head, you just get a swim cap, okay? Get a nice silicone swim cap or latex if you want a nice light feeling, okay? Uh, so let's get into the meat of this, all right? Now, you'll notice that he's using a lot of force in his front crawl. Now, this is a big problem, okay? And this is very common for beginners. And the reason why is because once you exert a lot of force in your swimming, you get tired really fast. Now, don't get me wrong, if you are trying to become a sprint swimmer, um, yeah, then you should set your goals really short. As in, like, you want to swim maybe like two to four laps maximum every time okay so that's so for a 25 meter or a 50 meter pool that's like you know that's like 400 meters maximum okay for, think about that all right 400 meters maximum would be like yeah your target if you're a sprint swimmer just sprint swimmer but you know i used to be a sprint swimmer and i got tired uh, i got bored of it really fast i mean because there's only so many sprints you can do in a session. So that's when I switched to long distance swimming. And I find long distance swimming to be a lot more uh, enjoyable and a lot more practical. Okay. Especially when you get older, you don't want to like you know, just kill yourself every time you, you swim in the pool. All right. So just, yeah, I go for long distance and long distance can consist of just really slow swimming to really fast sprint swimming. Okay, you can mix it up. Just like, you know, when you, you run on the treadmill or you run outside, you can mix it up, you know? You can walk, you can jog, you can sprint. That's what I think of when I, when I do swimming. It's usually long distance swimming. Here's the problem. Look at his arms. You notice that his arms are just swinging really violently, okay? In and out of the water. Now, this is going to be a problem, okay, in the long run. It's okay to pull violently but it's not okay to swing violently and here's why once your hand is out of the water you want to be as light as possible okay when i'm pulling i can pull gently or i can pull violently doesn't matter okay i'm a, i'm using the water to my advantage but when my arm is out in the air out of the water i am at a disadvantage okay so whether I do this or this is going to determine how tired I become in the long run, all right? 
So if I gently lift my arm out of the water like this and gently reinsert it or efficiently, smoothly reinsert it, I expend less energy versus this. This is unnecessary force. All right. Multiply this thousands of times. In your arms, the blood, all of that, that lactic acid is going to build up really fast and it's just going to make you really tired. Um, so my suggestion for him is to work on making your arm dead out of the water. Okay. There is a, there's a huge polarity. Okay. In this type of, this type of arm movement. Okay. So it's okay to pull really hard when you're in the water, but when your, your arm is out of the water, just make sure it's just dead. Okay. Just light and dead. That's what you want to think. Okay. He's thinking like hard and hard. It should be hard and then soft is what I'm trying to say. His kicking, um, his kicking's pretty good, but uh, again, it's it's a, it's a little bit too much. Um, you can see the the results from the white water. So what I'm trying to say is that if you try to kick like this for a long period of time, it's it's not gonna last long, okay? Because all the, all that lactic acid is gonna build up in your quads. Okay, you're gonna feel it. I've spoken about this before in other videos. When you re-enter the water, you want to sew your hand into the water. You want to like pretend like you have a needle and you're, you're threading into the water, okay? He's smacking his hand back into the water, okay? So that smack is going the opposite direction, okay? Every time you smack the water, you're going this way. So it's, it's creating a resistance in the opposite direction when you do that. Okay, so in order to counter this, this wall of water, you need to cut into the water. Cut with your hand, your finger. Cut, 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 and then reach forward. Okay, so he's got a good foot turn. No, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty good. That's what I like. Uh, that's really advanced, by the way. You don't need to learn flip turns in the beginning by the way. Uh, a simple Spider-Man push off the wall will, will suffice. So if you don't know what that is, you swim to the ledge, grab to the ledge, and then you just turn into the opposite direction and then you just push off. And then you start swimming the other way. I mean, it's just as efficient, okay? Because when you do a flip turn, you, you need to do a lot of things at once. And that can take a lot of air out of you. Maybe if you're not comfortable, if you time it wrong, all of these factors can you know, make you even more tired. Okay, so this is a process of reducing tiredness or improving efficiency, especially when you're trying to swim this aggressively. And uh, yeah, my tips for him is to, yeah, just take it easy, okay? If you are trying to be a sprint swimmer like him, then yeah, you will have to make some adjustments. Uh, but if you're trying to be a long distance swimmer, then you're going to have to change up your swimming style altogether, okay? Those are my tips for him, and I wish him the best of luck. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this type of swimming, uh, leave them down below, and uh, we'd love to hear from you, okay? So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. My name's Justin, and uh, bye!